，不帅不帅，大的带小的嘛，是，那可以帮忙的啊，嗯，很好。So what does he do? He whips off his clothes, goes butt naked in front of Cao Cao and all of the other officials. Welcome to the ancient streets of Wuhan. And when I say ancient streets, I actually mean ones that were built probably 10 years ago and made to look old. Because this place is all where they do um, photography, like family photos. And if you want it to look old school, you need an old backdrop. Right, so today what we're going to do, rather than hang around all these fake buildings, is head to see the tomb of a celebrated critic of the ancient Chinese government. Not the current government, ancient Chinese government. He was very critical and they killed him for it. He's a bit of a character. When I say character, he's a bit of an oddball. But yeah, we'll go investigate and I'll tell you a bit more. Let's try it, right? Oh, good. It's very high, 1 meter 94. 94? Yes. Which country is it? I'm Mm. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're here going one, two, three stops. Then we need to take a bus. That's the stop with our friendly shopkeeper. So maybe I'll go say hello to that guy if I can find him. <laughs> Ah,三五吧。今天有点凉啊。哎,你牙签刚不长,你年纪那个。今天到哪里去玩呢?今天去汉阳。哦,其实我就住在汉阳。啊,你住在汉阳。对。到汉阳哪个地方呢?叫什
Mi Hung. He was apparently a brilliant scholar in his youth, uh, even in his early 20s. He was more than capable of kind of intellectually competing with the best of them. But he was a bit of a loose cannon. He was certainly not afraid of telling people how like it is. But yeah, it's an interesting one because in this country right now, we think of all the officials as guys who just toe the line, all yes men. But this guy was not a yes man and he's absolutely celebrated for it. So yeah, let's go if we can find, see if we can find Mi Hung's tomb. Oh, that took quite some time. The traffic leading up to the bridge was diabolical. Hardly moving, but it never actually came to a complete stop. But there's some kind of incident with some guy in a Porsche. Maybe he's broken down. I'm not sure. The map tells us we're heading back this way. Not across the bridge. But rather to... Somewhere over there. We'll see if we can make our way down there. Uh, there's some train tracks down there. So I really have no idea how we're going to get past, but we will give it a go. 170 meters, it reckons. What do you see ahead of us? Apart from stone wall and bushes, I feel like the map has taken us to what is technically the closest bus stop, but maybe not the most practical bus stop. We're here. So the map says, the map says this is the spot to get to the tomb. And it's down there. Yeah. I, I think we're gonna have to find another way around. All right, I've just come up the driveway of this community. And up on the map there, that little green dot, if my Chinese is correct, is the place we're going. So yeah, I don't even know if we can get in. Right, I had a long conversation with the guard at that community I just tried to get into. Sadly, I did not turn the camera on. I thought I had, but I had not. But um, yeah, they tell me, even though it's on the map there at the entrance, you can't get in that way because there's a fence around that gated community, so you won't be able to get over. So they told me, up this road, there's an old, old community on the left. We should be able to get in. But they don't really know, so if I can't get in this way, I think we're done. I think we might be done, but one last shot. There's a park here, let's just go have a look. Let's have a look. It's the right direction. <笑>我们五年都没有回来 这么大区别啊<笑> 
，那是导航的。嗯，从这个地方走过去是吧？从这里走过去是吧？是、嗯、往往这边走。哎，你你要不加个微信，加个微信，我把截图发给你。哎，我把截图发给你。好，谢谢谢谢谢谢。麻烦你们啊。没事。这个 A P P 叫高德，高德地图。哦，我刚刚用的是百度地图，哎，用 A P P 用高德高德高德好一些，哎，哎<笑>你如果按我这个截图还不够详细的话，你就用高德地图，地图哎、好好好，它会导航，就是有哪怕很小的路，它都可以给你导导出来，好好好，导能不能导的？他要交警，你不都打不出来？高德应该没问题。他、哦、很小的路，这、哦、小巷子都知道。哎，都知道。哦，好。哎，好，谢谢谢你们，谢谢谢谢。Well, those guards were really helpful. Not only did they give me directions. Added me on his app to send me the map. Also gave me a smoke. Very Chinese. That's really Chinese. Chinese guys and their cigarettes. It's a thing. Straightforward temperament worth careful ponder. Words to live by as we try to find this bloody tomb. Okay, this is the road. According to that guy's map, his app, which is apparently superior to the app that I've been using. This is the way. This is the way. This can't be it. I'm a second wrong turn. Can't be up there. 你好，上不去。哎，你要上哪？这边是不是有一个什么墓？哎，是的，就在这个后面。怎么走？那你这里才不好上啊。这边不好。就在这个后面。就在这个上面。从这边，一个好听的楼梯。哦，这里有个楼梯。前面，前面。前面前面你是住在这这附近？就就就就是。啊、哦，谢谢啊。不用，我是看你好像在找什么。我说你要上桥上去。<笑>哦，在这个楼梯啊、哦哦。上桥，看到就往右边走。上楼梯，然后右转。哎，就那里个，有路。好好好,好，慢走。谢谢谢谢谢谢。Thank goodness. For the kindness of strangers, willing to help out this lanky Kiwi, looking for a tomb, which apparently nobody knows exists. Oh yes, <sighs> jackpot, baby. So why was I so keen to find this guy Mi Hung's tomb? Well, he goes back to the years like 190. Ish, for when he's a prominent scholarly official, and as I said, he's known for kind of a bad temperament, but absolutely speaking his mind. Everyone knew the dude was a talented guy, but he just didn't know when to toe the line. So we're talking just prior to Three Kingdoms period China. If you know anything, if you've played Total War, you're probably familiar with Cao Cao and the other big players from that period. Well. This guy, Mi Hung, he wasn't afraid of Cao Cao. That's for sure. As the story goes, Cao Cao had heard about this guy Mi Hung, and he was pretty impressed by this guy's prospects. So he invited him to come and serve, to come and meet. But Mi Hung wasn't a big fan of Cao Cao, so he refused. A second time, Mi Hung. Was invited to come and meet with Cao Cao. At this time, they agreed. Mi Hung was apparently not only a talented poet and scholarly official, but also a great drummer. So they said to Mi Hung, "Come play the drums for Cao Cao, and put on this special outfit. This is the outfit you need to wear while you're drumming." So he shows up for the drumming, but he's not wearing the outfit that he's been told to wear. So he's berated. By the others, the other officials tell him, "What are you doing, man? You gotta put on the gear, show some respect." So what does he do? He whips off his clothes, goes butt naked in front of Tao Tao and all of the other officials, and slowly and carefully puts on the outfit provided, and just nonchalantly goes about the performance that he was supposed to be given. Guy did not give a. F Sadly for Mi Hung, doesn't end well. People in those days. Can only put up with that kind of attitude for so long, and eventually, he offended the wrong guy, and off with his head. So he was executed 
One story goes that he was plotting against the emperor and the other goes that he just offended the wrong guy. Either way, his head was parted from his shoulders. Apparently though, the guy who ordered his execution later regretted the kind of rash action taken, but once your head is off, there's no putting it back on. So this is what remains of his tomb. I can't actually read all of those words because they're really old style Chinese. I'm pretty sure that's his name. That says Han, which I think would make sense because he was killed at the end of the Han Dynasty right before the Three Kingdoms period where China was kind of divided after the Han Dynasty ended. Um, I'm assuming that says his age because he died when he was 26. It says something about 26. You might think this is where his body would be, but no. I think at most that it'd be some kind of artifact, clothes, something like that. There's certainly no body in here. This on the back, I'm not even going to attempt to translate because I can't understand much at all. If I'm not mistaken, this is some of his poetry. Apparently the guy was a pretty talented poet and poetry back in those days was really high regarded as kind of a mark of an intelligent man. So, or intelligent person. So that's, I believe the one surviving poem that's attributed to Mihong. Now, sadly for Mihong, death wasn't quite the end. He's, um, well, he's been memorialized. Like I said, the, the guy who ordered his death uh, regretted it and then kind of celebrated him, giving him a proper burial at the end. A bit too little too late, if you ask me. But um, this tomb itself was subsequently destroyed during the Cultural Revolution when Mao had that idea about, you know, destroy the old, get rid of the four olds. So this was one of the things that got destroyed but it was subsequently rebuilt so at least that's a testament to the people who run the kind of cultural archiving stuff these days but yeah nobody i spoke to really had any idea where this place was except for the one lady who lives just down there she knew it was here i can't imagine many people will come here although there's a few relatively fresh uh cigarette butts down there so at least uh, if nothing else it seems to be a nice spot nice quiet spot to come and have a smoke as you can hear the trains going by on the line behind us every now and again and it looks like it has at least been recently given some love because this placard dates to 2021 so somebody still knows it's here if not many that's me hung the dude who took his clothes off played the drums and lived to tell the tale in front of the notorious Cao Cao well he lived to tell the tale for a little while but not that much longer. I do need to say a big thanks to the multiple people who helped me find this place. Uh, the map certainly sold me down the river and if there was one time I'm thankful that I took some language classes this is pretty much it. The phone can get me so far but yeah sometimes you need a bit of help and uh, fortunately I met a bunch of kind people who were more than willing to give this guy a hand today. So cheers guys, take care, talk to you again soon. Welcome to the banks of the mighty Yangtze River. That dude is swimming this way and he's getting nowhere. <laughs>